Hey guys, so today I'm coming at y'all with this creamy chicken Alfredo lasagna recipe that is to die for. And I also have a bonus for you guys. We are also making soft, airy, homemade garlic herb breadsticks. You guys do not want to miss this. So now that you have already subscribed, turn your notification bell on, like this video, and all that good stuff, we are going to get started on our lasagna noodles. So I'm using Ronzoni. The brand really doesn't matter to me. Whatever you have, you use it. And you will see me pouring the whole box in there. You do not need the whole box. You actually just need like 9 to 12 sheets. I prefer to use uh, 12, but you could use 9. Um, and we're going to undercook it. You follow the directions on the box and cook it for like five minutes less because we are going to be baking it. So you do not need the pasta to be like super soft. So I already salted my water and I add a little bit of oil so it doesn't stick. So while that cook, let's go ahead and get started on a couple of stuff, right? So I have me one pack of frozen spinach and I would advise you get frozen spinach, right? Saves you money and time. So get the frozen spinach. And then I'm going to add 16 ounce of cream cheese. That's two package of cream cheese. And you want to leave this out for a couple hours before. So it's nice and soft. So it's easy to mix, right? To that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt as well as some black pepper. About the same amount of black pepper in there. And I'm going to mix that up. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of ricotta cheese. I do not like much ricotta cheese. I either omit it completely or I add a little bit of it. So one tablespoon of ricotta. If you like ricotta, you could add more, but that's enough. And I'm just going to add about um, two teaspoons of that garlic parsley seasoning. And then I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese, about half cup should do the trick. You can add more if you like, but yeah, some Parmesan cheese. All right, so there goes our spinach and cheese mixture. I'm just gonna set this aside while I drain the pasta. In the meantime, we're going to get started on our white sauce. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter into my pot. Let that melt. And then I'm going to add about two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and I'm just going to saute that 
to create a roux because we're making a roux um and this is going to thicken up our cream sauce it's going to aid in thickening up right so i'm just going to go ahead and cook the flour into the butter And then I'm going to add one whole can of chicken broth and I'm just going to stir that in for about a minute. And to that I'm going to add some light cream. You could use heavy cream, half and half, whole milk, whichever one you have on hand. But I'm using light cream today. And you just want to go ahead and keep stirring until your sauce thickens up. It's going to take a little while, maybe like 15 minutes or so, but you want to keep stirring. And this is the brand of light cream that I used. So good. This is the brand that I used. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep stirring this until my sauce has thickened up. And you do not want to add any seasoning yet. You want it to reduce and thicken up and then you taste and then you know what you need because the chicken broth already had salt in it so you do not want to add any seasoning you just stir and stir until the sauce thickens up and you could add a little bit of parmesan cheese to your white sauce as well i don't know where that clip went but i did add about a quarter of a cup of parmesan cheese in my white sauce so yeah, it adds a little extra oomph and it helps it thicken up as well. As you can see, she's getting nice and thick, thick. A. And you can tell it's getting thick because when I take my spatula and I pass it through the sauce, when I tilt the pan, it takes a while to fill back in. So that's when you know. So I'm just going to keep stirring it a little bit because I want it a little bit thicker. All right, so you can see that you have a clear separation there. This is what I want, right? But I want it a little thicker, so I'm just going to stir it for a couple minutes until it thickens up some more. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of that garlic parsley seasoning, maybe like two teaspoons of that. as well as some black pepper. And I think I used about, let's see, half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then I added about a pinch of salt because as I said, the chicken broth did contain the sodium in it chicken broth is very salty actually so i did use the 33 percent less sodium one i would advise you try finding that one it's better for you and you could control the salt more so yeah i used that one and here you see i'm tasting it to see and it was perfect so let's get started on assembling the thing now so i'm putting four lasagna noodles in the bottom because i feel like it hold up the sauce and stuff better so i'm just gonna cut the end there so that it fits in the pan perfectly and yeah
So after that, you want to go ahead and add your spinach and cheese mixture right over the lasagna noodles. And it should spread pretty nicely because our cream cheese has been nice and soft. So it will spread nice and easy. And you want to add a third of your spinach and cheese mixture on this layer, right? So we split and everything up into thirds. Here I have um, two cups of shredded chicken breast and I'm gonna add a third of that over the spinach and cheese mixture. And I used um, two pounds of chicken breast that I seasoned with salt, black pepper, a bit of that parsley, garlic seasoning that you saw earlier, um, and a little bit of oil baked at 350 for 30 minutes. And then I let it cool down and I shred it with my hands. You could use store-bought rotisserie chicken and just shred it with your hands. It's going to save you some time, but if not, I would advise you get the bone-in skin on chicken breast and bake it yourself. I will list everything that you need to know in the description bar, so check it out. And then you want to ladle in a third of your white sauce. So as I said, we separate in everything into thirds. Your spinach and cheese sauce, the chicken as well as your white sauce in thirds So I'm just going to speed this up because it's pretty repetitive from here. So, yeah.
all right so and now that we're done with the assemblations i'm going to top the lasagna with some cheese and i love this ultimate thick cut blend by borden you could use cheddar cheese provolone cheese is fire on this too but this is the cheese that i'm using i'm using that thick cut as well as the quesadilla cheese by the same brand borden i just realized i used only borden cheese for this video borden you need to cut me my check but anyways um yeah use whatever cheese you like i like this cheese because it melts beautifully at the top so yeah And you guys, this trick is a lifesaver because you know sometimes when you bake stuff and you cover it with foil, the foil stick up on your cheese and just ruin everything. This toothpick trick would save the day. So it would prevent the foil from sticking to your cheese. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover that. And we're going to bake this baby at 350 for 45 minutes. And then we're going to remove the foil and broil it for about two to three minutes on high. So at this point, you can remove your toothpicks and the foil and everything and gonna let this broil for a couple minutes so that the cheese could brown, right? And here we go guys here is our lasagna so you just want to let this cool down for a bit before we cut into it just let it cool down for a few minutes right all right now is the moment of truth now it's time to cut into our lasagna okay But I almost forgot, gotta sprinkle some parsley on the top of there, some fresh parsley. You know, just for a little garnishing, a little prettiness. This was so decadent so decadent so let's go ahead and make the homemade breadsticks now i already um needed my flour off camera i have so much videos where i'm like needing flour my bakes video is basically the same thing so i'm going to link it in the cards you could just watch me put flour and stuff in a bowl and knead it if you guys want to see that so i did that and i just let that rise for an hour so here we have our risen dough gonna deflate it a bit and we going to um separate our dough in a few pieces all right gonna deflate it a bit roll it up into a nice little ball then i'm gonna stretch it out a little into a little log and then i'm just gonna cut it up i think i made like eight breadsticks or so so yeah
As usual, you guys know the drill. As I said, everything will be in the description bar. So check it out. And I'm not really looking for perfect size breadsticks here. They came out perfect though. Um, the sizes that I made, they were perfect. So yeah. So I'm just stretching and rolling out each piece a little longer, you know, like you see here. And then you want to cover that and let it rise again for half an hour. And that it is risen a little bit. I am going to just brush it with some melted butter and bake it at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. So here we have our freshly baked breadsticks and I wish you guys could smell the kitchen at this point. Oh, the smell from the lasagna and the smell from this breadsticks, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make the Italian herb butter. Just going to add about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning in some melted butter as well as some garlic powder, but the same, about a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm just going to mix that and we're going to brush that over the breadsticks while they're still hot. You want to brush it while it's still nice and hot and be liberal here. Let me go ahead and break one for you guys. Look at how soft and airy this is. I know you guys could see. And it's still nice and hot. Soft, airy perfection. Now, this tastes just like Olive Garden breadsticks. You guys, no kidding you. 
amazing amazing all right guys thank you so much for watching i hope you guys try these recipes if you do let me know my social media is linked in the description bar and as always i'll see you guys in my next video later